We'll go on to the next slide. One second to make if I, I do have a quick intro. Give me one second. Okay. I know oh, you're you guys. Sorry. No, you're quite okay. Good afternoon and welcome to the State of North Carolina Agency Meet and Greet Series. My name is Andrea Bennett and I lead a program called Ed to NC, operated through the North Carolina Office of State Human Resources. The main goal of this program is to excite, motivate, and encourage college students, alumni, and early career professionals into rewarding careers in state government. Thank you all for joining us here today. This is day five of our series with the North Carolina Department of Public Safety. Before I hand it off to DPS, I have a few announcements. At the end of this meeting, I will be sending out a link to a very short survey with a follow-up email. Please take the time and complete it and give us your feedback. Also, if you are interested in registering for another session, I will provide that link in that email as well. Besides that, if you have any questions during the course of this presentation, please feel free to use the chat unless otherwise noted by our presenters. Without further ado, the North Carolina Department of Public Safety. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Andrea. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Woo! We are DPS. We can go to the next slide. So here is a fun fact sheet about NCDPS. Um, we are one of the largest state agencies uh, with approximately 26,000 employees. Um, our mission is to protect and serve, and our motto is prevent, protect, and prepare. So here are a few um, facts about our agency, some of our preferred degrees, criminal justice, um, human services, social work, nursing, um, some that are not listed. Uh, we do um, technical um, positions, plumbing, HVAC, uh, electronics. We have teachers. Um, in addition to emergency management, business administration, information technology, accounting, finance. Um, we offer diverse opportunities in adult corrections, juvenile justice, state highway patrol, state capital police, emergency management, state bureau of investigation, alcohol law enforcement, national, um, the National Guard, just to name a few. Um, and we also are showing you guys a little bit about some of our entry level positions below. Next. Hi, I'm Tamika Judd, and I am your NCDPS Diversity Recruitment and HBCU Internship Manager. I also coordinate other internship opportunities with DPS. Next. So NCDPS um, has uh, the following listed division agency internships, ranging from SBI, Juvenile Justice, State Highway Patrol, State Capitol Police, Emergency Management, ALE, HBCU, Probation and Parole, Central Prison, just to name a few. Uh, these opportunities are offered in the fall and in the spring and in the summer. There are also other opportunities that can be created for a student based on their internship credit programs. Next. So how do I secure an internship with DPS? That's a good question. So most of our internships are um, listed on our internship career page. I'm going to stick that in the chat for you to take a look at. There's also internships that are not on this particular website. So it's very important to when you're out and you're career fairs or when you're talking to your career development um, centers, make sure you get contact information um, of the agencies or the companies that you're interested in. That way you can reach out to that person personally about your personal needs. So for our SBI, for our probation and parole, for the HBCU program, those programs are offered in the spring, like I said, summer and fall. It's very important that you remember dates, um, remember contacts, um, 
remember that it's important to go in and set job alerts. Um, it's also important right now to start getting your cover letters, your reference letters, your unofficial transcripts uh, ready now. Um, also, some of these internships ask for um, uh, background information. They ask for at least three or four references from professors. Uh, so it's a great idea to get started now, especially if you're looking to land an internship in the spring uh, or even in the summer. Start preparing that paperwork now so when the postings are available, you already have the information needed to upload to the portal or to the applicant um, tracking system. Next. So these are different types of experimental learning opportunities that we offer. So externships, job shadowing, micro internships, volunteer work. Um, most of our internships are anywhere from 10 weeks to 12 weeks. We also have a military internship. Next. Let's see, can you click on the play button? I probably will need to reset it to share my computer sound. One second. Okay. So this is just a video this summer. We had a um, statewide internship reception where uh, Governor Cooper thanked all of the interns that have participated in various internships throughout the state. Um, he wanted everyone to understand that whether the internship is paid or unpaid, um, you are providing an important public service to the state of North Carolina. So whether you are looking for a internship with DPS or one of the other agencies, um, know that whatever internship that you select, that you are really giving back to North Carolina. Yeah, I'll try to play right now. What an intrepid group to come out on yep. such a hot and humid day. And so I realized that you uh, hear my it? long uh -huh. speech is yep. not something that you would want to hear. But first, just let me thank you so much for serving this day. Uh, some of you are paid, some of you are, are unpaid, but all of you are providing an amazing public service. I hear that from the people that you work with. You are contributing to the public good. So thank you for that. What an intrepid group to come out. So like I said, oh, so like I said, internships um, are definitely important to get um, that experimental learning experience uh, on your resume. If you have any questions, um, I'll make sure I put my information in the chat. So good afternoon. Um, my name is Stephanie Hoover. I am one of the regional um, HR consultants with Department of Public Safety. We have Ms. Kim Shaw, who is our moderator over here, um, entering information into our chat. Ms. Shaw and I work in different areas of the state. So the great thing about Department of Public Safety is because of the types of uh, services that we provide, the divisions that report to the Department of Public Safety, we have operations in all 100 counties of North Carolina. And with that come a lot of different career opportunities. So whether you want to live in the mountains or on the coast or in the city, we've got opportunities for you. Slide, please. So some of the positions that we're constantly and we're currently and constantly recruiting for have a lot of different working titles. Um, I know that Ian asked us a question in the beginning of our uh, presentation about some uh, career positions in administration, professional positions. Our administration um, opportunities include everything from entry level to advanced professional. So whether you're looking for that first um, career opportunity with state government or you've got the education and experience 
experience to come in and really be um, a career uh, minded um, individual for state government, we've got opportunities. We have everything from administrative assistance all the way up to directors of administration. That's going to include all of those opportunities in between those like ourselves um, human resources. We are classified as administration. We have, um, you know, budgeting, finance, um, accounting, legal. Um, there's a lot of different opportunities depending upon, you know, your career interest, your path, your education and your experience. Adult corrections, we have oversight for our adult prisons in North Carolina. You're going to find a lot of opportunities as correction officers, food service officers, our maintenance and skilled trades. Um, I know many are involved in the certificate programs at our local community colleges. Um, we often have a, a large need for our maintenance and skilled trades in many different facilities across the state. That's not only with adult corrections, but that's also with, you know, the state National Guard, emergency emergency management, in our warehouse, facilities, logistics. Uh, we even employ our own truck drivers for our warehouse operations. So a lot of opportunities to join state government in a, in a large variety of opportunities there. Um, medical, which you will hear about some more of those specifics later from one of our presenters, we employ our own medical staff at our facilities, and that's going to be anything from entry level, nurse aid, LPN, of course, advanced degrees like our RN, BSN, up to our professional doctors. We have doctor, dentist, psychologist. We are also actually now recruiting for med aid and phlebotomist for many of our facilities. So a lot of new opportunities to join in the medical field. Um, we often have a lot of human service opportunities with DPS. For those of you who have a degree or an interest in human services, social work, case management, sociology, psychology, any of those human service based programs. We have counselors, we have case managers, we have behavioral analysts, we have um, substance abuse workers, uh, you know, behavioral specialists. There are a lot of different opportunities out there with that human service component. So if you do have that human service interest, just make sure you're focusing on that coursework that gets you those human service credits that you need for the positions. Um, in our juvenile justice division, we also have someone here today that's going to give you some more specifics about some of the career opportunities with juvenile justice, but we have facility operations, we have community-based programs through our court services, and I'm going to let them share with you some additional opportunities as well in juvenile justice. We employ our own teachers because our young people are housed at our juvenile facilities, we have to provide for their education. So we employ our own teachers that in and they get to um, provide for the year round school model and they earn according to the teaching schedule with an additional 6% salary stipend on part of the uh, on top of that provided through the Department of Public Safety. Computer IT professionals. So a lot of people wonder, are we just corrections or are we just law enforcement? And no, we're not. So we have to have everyone today, this technology that we're sharing with you, someone has to set this up for us. I'm not the best at it. So often I have to call those IT professionals to help me through. We have help desk technicians. We have data analysts that are providing for the safety and security of all of our systems to prevent us from being breached or hacked. So a lot of different opportunities out there for those of you who are IT, uh, you have that IT uh, analytical mind and you're looking for opportunities to join state government. Our telecom and law and law enforcement are part of our highway patrol. Um, highway patrol has oversight for the telecommunications programs, emergency response in North Carolina, but also part of our law enforcement is going to be the alcohol law enforcement state bureau of investigation as well. Um, crime scene investigators, we have a lot of interest for those when they're exiting um, university. They want to be a crime scene analyst. They've watched a lot of CSI on television and they want to work in the labs and they want to go out and be on scene. We want to make sure that you're getting the right start. It's hard to walk into those positions right out of college. So you want to make sure you're definitely utilizing those internship opportunities, but you're also looking at the requirements of positions so that you know the experience that you need coming in. Many of those positions are going to require some previous law enforcement experience, and you'll have opportunities to join us in a, a large variety of roles, including probation, parole, which is sworn law enforcement, of course, the Highway Patrol and the ALE. Next slide, please. 
So briefly, because we are very limited today, but we would love to share more information for any of those who are interested. The first step for anything with state government, you may you need to make sure that you have an online profile. You want to make sure that your profile is professional and detailed because your profile is going to function as your employment application. So whether you're submitting one application or 10 applications, that profile is going to assist you in making sure that you're submitting all the accurate information about yourself to the state government system for all of our job postings. Um, next slide, please. So another opportunity that we have in our job system are job alerts. For those of you that are still in school um, and you're looking for the perfect opportunity, you want to make sure that you're getting alerts on a regular basis. Many of our job postings are only posted for a short amount of time. It can be anywhere from five to seven days, or it could be on what we call a continuous post where there's an opportunity to apply at any time. For those positions that are not on a continuous post, you, you must be looking at the system on a regular basis or you're going to miss the chance to apply. And that's where these job alerts can really assist you. So when you log into our NeoGov system, which is where all of our jobs are listed, on the left, left hand side there is a drop down menu for job alerts when you click the job alerts you're going to be able to go in and select those areas of interest that you have so does so that anytime a job is posted in one of those areas of interest you're going to receive an immediate job alert to your email inbox next slide please as you can see, there are categories, and this is just a very small brief snapshot of the categories. There's actually several pages of categories. So for someone who has um, an interest in administration, you want to make sure that you're going through there and you're selecting all of those relevant categories like accounting and finance, like administrative. It could be budgeting. You know, there's a lot of different things on there, a lot of categories. If you're law enforcement, you want to make sure you're also in your crime scene analyst. You want to make sure you're selecting all of the relevant categories categories so that anytime a job is posted with one of those relevant jo uh, job categories, you'll get that email alert, that notification to your inbox, and those notifications are good for 12 months. So once you register for a period of 12 months, you will continuously get those notifications, and you want to make sure that you're checking your email because you'll need to respond in a timely manner to make sure those job postings do not close before you have an opportunity to apply. Next slide. And once you've submitted an application, you have access to see the status of your application. When you log into the system under your name, you can do the drop down and select applications. You'll notice there are two tabs that you can toggle between, between the submitted and the incomplete. Any incomplete applications, you need to go ahead and make sure that you're getting those completed and submitted in a timely manner. For any of those that you've submitted and you kind of want to know where you are in the status of things, you can click the submitted tab and it will kind of show you you where you are in the processing steps. And of course, if you ever have a question, you're more than welcome to reach out to any of us here with Department of Public Safety. Next slide. Do we have any questions so far for internships or career opportunities before we move into those with the subject matter experts? Any questions? I don't see any questions at this time, okay. but I think if we can add some links in the chat for. Absolutely, will do. Perfect. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you for my part today. That's all I had to share. I will make sure I have some links that are shared. Ms. Shaw is also sharing some wonderful links here in the chat. So please make sure you're checking back within the chat links as, as we proceed today. Thank you. Hey, everybody. I think I'm unmuted, so if you can't hear me, hopefully you can. OK, I'm seeing smiles, so I think that's a good thing. Um, I'm Kara Bridges. I am a senior policy and planning analyst here with DPS. Um, and so I am the office that I work in is called the Office of Policy and Strategic Planning. We are located um, within the division of the chief of staff. So our director reports directly to the DPS chief of staff, just to give you a sense of where we sort of sit in the organization. So a um, little background about me. I have an undergraduate degree in political science from UNC Wilmington. Um, and then I have a graduate degree 
from NC State through their Master of Public Administration program. So um, I'll give you just a little sense of what we do. Our name sort of says it all. It's a little bit of a spoiler. <laughs> we do policy and we do strategic planning. So on the policy side, um, that's really setting guidelines, setting expectations on how our employees operate. And, um, you know, we've heard a little bit today about how DPS does sort of a little bit of everything and our policies certainly reflect that. So we have policies about professional conduct and how um, our employees are sort of um, held to a, a certain standard as, as public servants and that sort of thing. Um, we also have policies. We just did one on fire safety. So um, there is certainly something that you will be interested in because there's all kinds of topics and that's really what I, I like about my job. It's it's different every day. There's a chance to really dive into things that that I'm interested in, which I think is awesome. Um, we also work with a lot of different stakeholders. So we're centrally located. We partner very closely with all of our divisions and sections, whether that's law enforcement, whether that's emergency management, juvenile justice, prisons, community corrections. We work with everybody. Um, we also work closely with leadership. And so I think that's another unique part of this role is that we have um, we have the ability to work closely with the secretary with his leadership team to make sure our policies are um, getting at, at the direction they want the department to go in. And so that's, it's always a fun balance to um, sort of work with all these different stakeholders and put together a policy that makes sense. It's not super long and then it meets those objectives. So it's a challenge, but it's fun challenge. Um, the other piece of what we do is strategic planning. Hopefully most of y'all are familiar with strategic planning, but what that really does is it lays the, the grand vision of the leadership team of the secretary. And then we sort of submit that out to divisions and sections, which are the work units within DPS. And they are able to fill in how their day-to-day -day work brings the whole puzzle together, right? So they're all different pieces of the puzzle. And the strategic plan looks at how we fit together as a department. Um, we get to do a lot with building performance measures, building metrics. So um, that's things like saving lives after a hurricane with the emergency management division. That's also looking at things like how can we reduce fatalities on the highways with highway patrol. Um, so looking at really targeted ways to make a difference, make the state a better place to live. Um, and so that's a really exciting piece of it as well. Um, so I would just say that that's a high level look at what we do. Um, if that's something you're interested in, our team, OPSP, we regularly have interns. Typically, we have graduate level interns, so either Masters of Public Administration or Public Policy. Um, but we have had undergrads in the past and definitely we're open to them. The piece of advice I think I'd give is that I think opportunity builds on itself. So. Um, Put yourself out there. I think if you saw something or hear something today that you're interested in, even if it's not exactly what you envision for your 30 year plan, um, put yourself out there and try it. At a minimum, you learn some new skills, you meet some new people, um, but you never know. You might be surprised. I sort of fell into this this work and I've loved it. And so you might be surprised at what you end up loving. Um, but if you don't love it, you'll make great connections. Um, State government's big, but it's small. So these people will, you'll see them time and again, maybe in different agencies, um, but it's a great opportunity. I highly recommend doing an internship if you can, um, or, you know, just applying for a job with us because we'd also love to have you just work full time here. Um, so that is a little bit about me and I'm happy to answer any questions. I know we have a, a bit of a time limit today, so I'll, I'll keep it short, but that is me. And I think my contact information is on the slide. So if you're interested in OPSP policy and strategic planning specifically, feel free to reach out. Happy to chat with anybody um, and I'll turn it back over to whoever's next. If I can quickly interject, there was a question before we started. There was a um, 
a participant, I believe his name was Ian, that had a question. So Ian, if you're still on the call, I think uh, Kara may be a great contact, someone for you to connect with, whether during, if we have time during this call or offline. So if Ian, if you are in the call, I think this would be the great connection because I think you did state that you are in a, um, a master's program right now, if I remember correctly. Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, I'm actually uh, in my second year at NC State in the Masters in Public Administration program, and I'm actually taking a management systems course right now with Dr. Cogburn. So this is kind of right up my alley. So I'll definitely be looking into this more. So I appreciate that. Yeah, Ian, feel free to reach out. Um, we have an intern with us who's in her second year of the MPA program at state, and she's amazing. And so she's actually on with us as a full time temp now. So opportunities turn into other opportunities. So please reach out. Happy to chat. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jonelle Giulianelli. I am the Community Programs Contract Administrator for the Department of Public Safety and Juvenile Justice. Um, can you all hear me OK? Thumbs up if you can. OK, just making sure. Um, it is great to be here. Um, I am uh, a member of the DPS now for only two years, and I'm going to circle back on this, but I just want to share with you the overall message of um, my time with you today is patience and persistence. Um, so my personal experience um, is over 18 years of serving youth and families in uh, the state of Pennsylvania, as well as the state of North Carolina. Our juvenile justice system here in North Carolina is like no other, um, for sure. Um, so our mission, first of all, within juvenile justice is to reduce and prevent juvenile delinquency by effectively intervening, educating, and treating youth in order to strengthen families and increase public safety. So going back to my time in Pennsylvania, um, a lot of our referrals for juveniles were given through DSS. And so if there was a problem in the home, there was a problem with the youth, um, sometimes that makes sense. But the way that our juvenile justice system attacks this issue is if there's a problem with the youth, typically there is a problem in the home. And so our system in our lovely state of North Carolina deals with youth and what they can control um, and in a way that supports families and strengthens them, but also builds protective factors around our youth um, in a very non-punitive manner. If you could please move to the next slide. I would like to explain the way that juvenile justice is set up. And so we are a three-legged stool. Um, we cannot operate one without the other. So through legislative appropriations, juvenile justice has three separate sections, uh, main sections, and those would be court services, Court services is usually what people think of when they think of juvenile justice. So you're thinking juvenile court counselors, individuals that um, probation officers, some call them, but they are juvenile court counselors, individuals that help youth navigate through the juvenile justice system, whether it be a diversion, uh, youth that uh, maybe just needs a little help and some, some words of encouragement. Um, and there are youth that, obviously are, are more um, in depth into the system to where there's programming and um, even some residential um, needs for the youth. Um, and so court services will refer to both community programs and facilities. Um, facilities would be our youth development centers, which are for a longer term stay and our detention centers, which are for a shorter stay. Detention centers are typically where youth go when they um, are awaiting uh, adjudication through court or awaiting court in general. And from that court hearing, they will then be um, recommended through to a program or a facility, depending on the, um, the seriousness of the offense. So with court services, we have uh, a lot of the positions, like I said, that you all are familiar with. Um, so that would be juvenile court counselors, juvenile court counselor trainees. That 
core counselor trainee has no experience required. Um, the juvenile core counselor, two to three years experience within, um, not necessarily North Carolina, but within working with youth and families. Um, through our facilities, we have a ton of positions. Um, facilities try to give youth and families everything they need to come back to the community whole. And so within our facilities, we have clinical services, which include social work, um, psychiatrists, treatment modalities. We also have um, some of the education um, avenues that were spoken of earlier. So we have teachers that are in our facilities to teach youth. Um, we also have trainers um, that train our staff through court services and, and facilities um, to work with the youth and certify them to do that. Um, also within our facilities, we have food service individuals. We have um, individuals that support our healthcare services as was spoken of before. So there's a lot of layers to what can be done within the facilities um, to support youth because those are our the youth that need the very most care, there's a lot of attention that goes into that. Um, and with community programs, I'd just like to explain that there are two different parts of community programs. Um, so my role within community programs is uh, with contractual services. So there's $29 million that goes into the state of North Carolina through legislative appropriation for contracts. There's another $28 million that goes through the state through legislative appropriations and is filtered through each individual county. And so I want to focus on that and letting you know that our juvenile crime prevention councils um, serve each county in the state of North Carolina. Um, they are a body of individuals that all have skin in the game. So we're talking um, the head of DSS, the head of uh, I'm sorry, the chief of police, the, the um, head of, of any entity, so school districts, clergy, um, individuals that are invested in the safety of our youth. So within community programs, we have those contracts and we also have the juvenile crime prevention councils. Um, those, and we call them JCPCs, are looking for youth members to just volunteer and give feedback on some of the programming. Um, so every year, the risks and needs of the youth within that specific county are um, looked at through outcomes given the year before, and the Juvenile Crime Prevention Council Board decide what to do with that money that comes through the county. Uh, the larger the county and the more youth in the county, the more money that comes through that county, right? So uh, obviously Wake County, Mecklenburg County, Guilford County have quite a bit of money rolling through there um, and a lot of different um, options for programs. So when I mention patience and persistence, I would suggest that anyone coming into um, this field, looking into a position with juvenile justice to begin with programming, um, it's a way to connect with youth and families at a very intimate level, um, also to serve your community in a way that can really affect change. And so um, the juvenile crime prevention councils are always looking for youth members. We were, meaning the state of North Carolina was the last state um, in the United States to raise the age of juvenile jurisdiction. So up until December of 2019, a 16 year old can be charged as an adult for very minor crimes. Of course, the more serious the crime, everyone should be charged as an adult in the eyes of the law. However, we're talking simple affray, which is causing a fight after school or whatever that might be. Um, that's pretty typical. And kids are losing their opportunities at college or employment um, because of that. So the state of North Carolina uh, has raised the age of juvenile jurisdiction to 18, which is the normal age of, of juvenile jurisdiction all over the United States. Um, and with that brought a lot of 16 and 17 year olds into the system. So that means more kids in the juvenile justice system, more opportunities for employment, um, 
more chances for the youth to mature before um, they're held truly accountable for their actions and more opportunities for us as young adults and adults um, to aid them with that. Um, so my recommendation is, again, patience and persistence, um, beginning with your juvenile crime prevention council. And what I'll do is I'll put a few links in the chat um, for the juvenile crime prevention council. Um, so you can kind of figure out what, what, um, where your meetings are and um, who the contact people would be for that. Um, attend the juvenile crime prevention council meetings. They are public meetings. Um, and you can just sit and observe. You have really no investment um, other than to go and attend. But if you would like to become a member because of this Raise the Age legislation, there are opportunities for you to become a member of the council and actually have your voice heard as to how youth and families can be addressed through the programming that we do. Um, also, we have volunteer positions through our programs. So a lot of programs are looking, especially now that COVID is over, and it's difficult to get people to just work, um, to show up at work. Um, and kudos to you all for showing up at class and showing up in this session and being invested in your future. Um, but our programs are, are, are really coming out of a huge transformation and trying to engage families. The more young people available to help engage those families, the better. Um, I'll also drop a link in our chat to our facilities, our juvenile justice career link. Um, so we have a hiring opportunity tomorrow. Um, I know that you all are still in school, but there, this is one of those continuous um, postings that um, was spoken about earlier. There are several continuous postings um, and some of them are through this link for the juvenile court counselor, the ju juvenile court counselor trainee, and within the facilities, a youth behavioral specialist and the youth counselor technicians. Um, what I would suggest um, as a young person is to try as many things as you can to speak up when, um, when you have the opportunity to do so and um, stand up for someone that, that might not be able to stand up for themselves. So um, I'd be glad to entertain any questions. Um, and just please remember, even on your worst day, on a day where you're feeling not so great, um, you may be a child's best hope. So please, um, if you have any thoughts or questions, I'll put my email address and I'll also put a couple links in the chat for the JCPC meeting as well as the juvenile justice careers. I'll pause for questions, thoughts. You that, have that one more slide, Jonell. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. This is this is just part of our juvenile justice continuum. Um, so um, that was part of our um, of our mission and vision is a seamless, comprehensive juvenile justice system that provides the most effective services to youth and their families. So at the um, left of this continuum. Are, are some of our programming options. So that's some of the diversion and early intervention programming that I was kind of speaking of uh, toward, the, toward the middle and the right of this chart would be um, mo some more of our most serious um, and chronic viola violations. Um, so youth may be headed to youth development centers and things of that nature. Um, so you start off hopefully within community programs um, and then move through uh, court services into facilities. So that would be the direction that they move within this continuum of services. Thank you, Tamika, for that. All right, thank you for your time. Good afternoon, my name is Ramesh Upadia and I am a registered nurse. I'm also the nursing resource liaison for the health and wellness section in the Division of Adult Correction and Juvenile Justice for the Department of Public Safety. Um, so it might be surprising to you to hear how much health care is actually delivered within the uh, prison system. Uh, in all, we have hundreds of physicians, uh, occupational therapists, x-ray techs, um, and nurses, of course, we have uh, uh, 
thousands of nurses that work for us. We have 55 prisons across the state and we serve 37, uh, I mean, sorry, we serve over 30,000 uh, offenders. Uh, and it's really uh, a noble profession to begin with. But one of the things that I like the most about uh, working as a nurse in corrections is that many of these uh, men and women that come to prison come from uh, very low socioeconomic uh, status. And what that means is that healthcare may have not been uh, very high on, on their agenda uh, throughout their life. Uh, so we are in the unique position to initiate care and treatment um, and education that can have a profound impact on the rest of their life, even after they're discharged from prison. Uh, and I don't know anywhere else that you can do that on a daily basis except in correctional nursing. So uh, if you're interested in, or correctional health care, if you're interested in any aspect of health care, uh, think about corrections as a definite career path. It's, uh, it's a great place to work and it, uh, it's very rewarding. Any questions about correctional health care in general? I've been with the state for over 17 years and with DPS for just about six or seven years. Um, and until I came to DPS, I had no idea the extent that health care was delivered within the prison system. Uh, we do uh, quite a quite a lot of stuff. We do dressing changes. We do IVs. We have inpatient uh, facilities, and we have a um, a whole prison hospital in Raleigh. I don't think I see any questions in the chat. However, I will say that hands down for DPS for providing a wealth of knowledge over the course of these last 45 minutes and utilizing the chat to the utmost ability to provide no seriously like hands down top tier <laughs> of utilizing the chat of providing every single resource necessary for sure so thank you so much wholeheartedly um, for, for providing that to everyone who's um, participating in this session right here was there any uh, questions or anything for, for the group that was not answered from any of the guest speakers or any general questions that anyone may have for any of the folks who are here today with us? Andrew, We've I'm got ready. a great um, uh, video that you can watch and I put the link up here at uh, www.ncdps.gov slash nursing. It's a great video that you can watch that talks a little bit more about what it's like to be uh, uh, working in corrections healthcare. Thank you for that. Thank you, Ron. Um, so for um, the candidates that are on the call, as you can see, um, DPS has a lot of opportunities, whether it's internships, co-ops, apprenticeships, micro, uh, internships or if it's a career opportunity. Uh, we want you to feel free to apply and or reach out to us for further questions. All right, before we close out today's session, are there any other additional questions going once, going twice? Right. Thank you all for attending this afternoon agency meet and greet with the Department of Public Safety. Like I said, top tier folks, top tier for sure, with a wealth of knowledge. Presenters from, I, I believe, from almost every division of the uh, Department of Public Safety. Really impressed over here for sure. I am in awe of everyone information and learn just so much from everything that was shared this afternoon. Like I mentioned at the top of our uh, meeting today, I will be sending out an email with a very short survey to uh, ask, for, ask for everyone's feedback. This is the first time we're doing these agency meet and greets, so we would like to know if this is a format that we should keep.
Um, we're testing this out to see if this is a great way for everyone to uh, learn more about state agencies and get to know who we are and how you too can be a public servant and how you can be ins inspired as well to give back to your community, to your fellow North Carolinian. So please be on the lookout for that email as well. Um, but without that, thank you so much for attending this afternoon. Take care and please enjoy the rest of your day. Bye bye, everyone. Thank you for having us. Of course, of course. Thank you. Thank you.